scientists have been studying the brain for decades, and yet there is still so much we don't understand. What if there were a new way to see into the brain that was affordable, wearable, and made it easier to diagnose and treat disease? Well, Mary Lou Jepson is the CEO of Open Water and a serial inventor who is revolutionizing the field of medical technology with a concept that goes even further. So did you set out with the end goal to engineer telepathy? If you, you can see inside of your brain and you can see the use of oxygen, blood flow, and neurons firing, that can also help us see what's happening in brain disease. Six years now into starting Open Water, while the output of what we're doing can enable telepathy, there's a much more urgent crisis, and we want to save your mind before we read your mind. There are obviously ethical implications to this technology, so how are you able to safeguard people's privacy? All technology can be used for good and evil, and so one thing um, is we're not doing it in secrecy. We're reporting the results as we have them. We're having conversations with you. And we're working um, in broader discussions with governments. The country of Chile has made the first laws regarding machines that may be able to achieve telepathy, saying they need to be regulated as medical devices, not as consumer electronics, because then you get to look at health and safety like our FDA does. One of the best ideas I heard is the idea of asking your public officials what their opinion is on brain computer interface when they're running for office. <laughs> and so then they have to have a policy about it, which is another way to have this global conversation about it. How can your headset help treat brain cancer and other diseases? Right now, today, um, in little petri dishes, we've grown human brain organoids with brain cancer, with glioblastoma. And our results are, so far, this is very early, far better than chemotherapy. Cancer cells are brittle on the outside, fast-growing, aggressive cancers, the ones that kill you quickly. And the rest of the cells in your body are not. They're very flexible. The cells are a lot akin to like a wine glass where an opera singer at the right frequency can burst that wine glass. And so that's what we're doing uh, to kill glioblastoma cells. And the implications are pretty profound for all aggressive cancers. So where are you today when it comes to the proving those stages? And what does a device look like coming to market? Is there a timeline on that? The first product we're working towards uh, well, now it's sort of maybe head, neck and neck, glioblastoma or stroke. Stroke's the number two killer in the world. And um, if you think about it, 90% of the time, it's a clot. We know how to remove bus clots. There's a drug you can take, or if it's a big clot, you can pull with a catheter the clot out of your head. And yet it's the number two killer, number one cost of long-term disability. Why? And the reason why is it's a time to diagnosis crisis. And, and the definition of a stroke is basically right, left hemisphere blood flow difference. And so we created a device that can measure in detail the blood flow um, to look at those differences in the ambulance at home. And we're also working on kind of the auto defibrillator for that, where um, for heart attack, there's been a faster diagnosis for some years, and now there's a defibrillator, but there's not that solution for stroke. Why do you think medical imaging innovation hasn't happened as fast as the technology industry as a whole? I was sitting there at Facebook and looking at what engineers with the talent that I have were doing. And it was like every brain cell was being used for next generation LIDAR or next generation advanced virtual reality and augmented reality. Important areas of work, but I thought nobody saw that maybe we could use this steady march of Moore's law enabling the next generation of those technologies.